You might be familiar with holograms or three-dimensional light projections from movies like Star Wars. I regret that I am unable to present my father's request to you in person. Hi, I'm Tim Draper. I... Now they're popping up in workplaces as businesses find ways to battle Zoom fatigue in this era of remote working. Tech executives say this kind of hologram may soon be common in conference rooms around the world. Hi, Joe. Can you check out these new designs and let me know if you approve? I think the pandemic has accelerated just the need and, and use of this technology. It's, it's a little easier to create a hologram of yourself, your colleagues. Along with beaming into meetings or events, yeah, that's just amazing to me. holograms are being used in fields like healthcare, engineering, education, gaming, and entertainment. And so we see this being a, a stepping stone for people to get creative about how they teach, whether it's on the modeling side, whether it's on the 3D structure side, chemical engineering, it's a whole new universe. But hologram technology could have limits in the workplace. They also tend to have a higher price point compared to other types of communication technology. With Zoom fatigue spreading, could this be the next evolution in remote work? How practical are holograms in the office? And are they worth the cost? Hi, I'm David Nussbaum. I'm the founder and CEO of Proto. Proto is a Los Angeles-based tech company that offers life-sized photorealistic projections. I'm Billy Morrison, I play guitar for Billy Idol. There is 30,000 lumens of interior light, so whatever the content is, whether it's a 3D model or whether it's an NFT or whether it's a real person materializing in before you, it'll appear like that person is there. Proto's holograms appear on a seven-foot tall booth or a smaller 24-inch box. A user can beam in from anywhere in the world. They just need a camera, a plain backdrop, as well as a set of speakers and microphones to record them in real time. But we have also just created an app that allows the person to use their iPhone. So in time, when a, uh, an employee or a CEO or anybody needs to beam into a location, they don't need to have an entire studio set up. All they need is a phone and, and our free app. The hologram market is projected to double in growth from $2.7 billion in 2020 to about $5.4 billion in 2024. This is largely driven by the technology's wide range of commercial applications. The hologram industry right now is made up of both tech giants and smaller startups. So companies from the big tech giants like Google and Microsoft are involved in the space as well as smaller startups and they each vary with what they're offering to consumers and businesses. Right now, Proto's hologram system is largely aimed at business customers. Clients like Netflix, T-Mobile, and Formula E Racing have used the device to communicate between offices or beam into trade shows, entertainment events, and seminars. Oh, man. <laughs> Proto's larger device is priced at $60,000, or it can be rented for about $25,000 per event. We were recently at New York Fashion Week where we were able to beam in fashion models from all over the place into the device. They had the ability to walk around also because we can track people. We're using it for uh, financial institutions and inter-office communication, uh, for telecoms, uh, for uh, office work. Meanwhile, the University of Central Florida is using Proto's hologram device as an education tool. Talking and walking, right? That's something that we do all the time. Medical students can interact with both live and pre-recorded projections of patients with a variety of medical conditions. It's like telehealth, but it's a like hologram health. Because the person is really standing there before you with all of her shadows and, and reflections and, and volumetric effects. Other hologram firms are more focused on the consumer market, such as San Diego-based ICAN. Early next year, it plans to launch a hologram device that users can clip into their mobile phone. The company says it will be able to project a transparent 3D hologram of people on video conferencing calls. It's more comfortable to look at, at, at something that's spatially normalized to your environment. It's also less intense light. And we retain the color saturation, we retain the resolution, the detail, but we also soften that light energy to the point where now it's one more normalized to the environment, but it's less harsh to the eyes, so you can actually experience it for longer without getting fatigue. Estimated to cost less than $500, Icon says the device will allow users to move media from their phone directly into the holographic display. We refer to it as a interplay between states. 
So you have something on the 2D screen, you can actually swipe it up into the environment, it'll immediately be translated, and then you can swipe it back to the phone, which is quite cool. Icon's hologram devices are currently being used by several businesses, including a U.S. military contractor that is using the technology to help find and stock inventory in large warehouses. Holograms are also being used to help aid on-the-job field repair and research. Microsoft's HoloLens 2 was used to create a deep sea exploration vessel's holographic laboratory. Wearing the headsets allowed scientists to interact with holographic diagrams and collaborate from labs and offices around the world. You have companies using them to remotely train people for jobs that require people to really understand how a big machine works. Still, the often bulky equipment and costs associated with holograms means they have yet to prove useful for daily interactions. While there are some companies out there looking to make these devices more consumer friendly and cheaper, right now it's still pretty out of reach for most consumers. So even if a consumer wanted to use it with their friends or family, it's a little out of most people's price range. As with any new form of technology, hologram experiences are not always seamless. The user experience varies greatly depending on what type of device is being used. For instance, some are more photorealistic, while others are more cartoony. Certain holograms can only work in specific types of lighting, while others require access to a strong power source. You can have holograms that perhaps don't render as well on someone's computer because of something they're using, or maybe their internet is just really bad that day, and they won't be able to see you the way you're meant to be seen. While hologram companies push for more widespread adoption, growing demand is driving millions of dollars of investments in the tech and venture capital world. You have players like a, like a tech giant like Google, you know, starting to enter this space as well. And I think you're starting to see smaller startups gain more interest, more funding, and just actually be something that we don't talk about as something in the movies and something that we might be able to use every day or you know, see more often during events or in the workplace.